So on the introductory video that we did uh, a little while ago, we were looking at uses for this uh, electrostatically bonded graphene on the BOPET. And we've got to test one of those now. We've seen it plate, and we'll show you some other plating videos. But today I want to show the EMF and EMI capabilities, the, the, the shielding yeah. capabilities of this. Yeah, so um, what we're going to use is this thing behind me. Uh, and that's our Wi-Fi and we're going to see how much each one of these attenuates the Wi-Fi signal so I'm going to use just a blank piece, uh, empty piece of uh, BOPET that's about 100 microns thick the same BOPET is what I'll put the electrostatic graphene onto so we're going to use that as well and earlier on in the video you saw Mandy preparing two sheets of the same BOPET this one's with our water resistant ink and this one is with our standard ink. So we're going to test all three and we're going to use one of these to test it. So this is a electromagnetic uh, radiation detector, I guess. So we'll strike it up, we'll go nearer to the uh, Wi-Fi hub so you can see it and we'll see how much attenuation we get on each one. Okay, so here's our trusty Wi-Fi hub. Here's the meter. So the top measures in, I don't know if you're able to see that, volts meters, and the bottom in micro teslas. So the tops is the electrical, the bottom is the magnetic. Let's put it in front of there and see what we get. So about 360, 380 volt meters. Micro teslas, well, it's hard to block. So first of all, we're gonna try plain bit of plastic and as we would expect absolutely no difference now if Mandy can hand me what do you give me here this is my electrostatically bonded graphene on the sheet now it's it's cut it out it's still 34 35 micro teslas I'm acting as the distributed earth obviously if I let go of that completely if I'm able to without it sliding down then it's going to come back as soon as I touch it, it drops right off. Okay, now we'll try our ink. This is what ink is this, Mandy? Water resistant one, this one. This is the water resistant ink. Again, well, it's about 38 micro Teslas, zero electrical field. And then we've got the standard ink. Again, no electrical field. About 40 micro teslas on that. And just to, um, for the hell of it, we're going to try a bit of aluminium as well. Aluminium foil. So zero on the electrical side, around 32 micro teslas. Okay, so we know from upstairs, highly conductive surfaces, as we know, can interrupt Wi-Fi signals, radio signals, all sorts of signals along the EM spectrum. What we want to do really is to grab those signals. Uh, there are, there'll be AC waves. We want to convert them into a DC current and use it to power things. So we've got a setup down here that I'm going to run through with you now um, and follow it all the way through and then we try and do a demonstration. So what I've got is a bit of a larger um, electrostatically graphene bonded sheet and what I've done is just wrapped it round one of our stanchions so it's effectively in a cube really round there. From there we've connected an aerial or an aerial lead that runs all the way down and we've got an arrangement here that I want to show you just what that area was picking up so what we've got is a rectifying circuit here these are very cheap you can buy these for sort of a dollar a couple of dollars uh, out in the market I've got my um, multimeter set to volts and we've got an aerial that comes out of these rectifying circuits I've found that that makes no difference I don't know why I am not an electron, electronics expert, but 
that being grounded to a clean earth makes absolutely no difference to what this uh, performs like as a circuit. So we will put red to red. Black to black. Yeah, settle down and then the aerial will start working. And there we go, that's voltage. So it's up to half a volt already. Um, what we can do is add to this circuit. So there are, um, it's okay having voltage, but we also need power. We also need watts or milliwatts coming out of it. So later on, I will strap a capacitor to it. Um, and I'll also put a jewel thief on it. And we can, uh, we're, we're conne I've connected the jewel thief to the, to the motor, I mean, see, and we'll see if we can spin the motor at a later date. But there we go, the voltage are increasing, that will go up to about, I've been testing it, to about 15 volts and it just keep climbing. Right, so here's the setup then. Uh, what we've got is the, uh, we just added in the capacitor there. That's the jaw thief and there's a tiny little button on that jaw thief that hopefully is going to make that motor spin. Again, like Rob's, it won't spin for too much, but uh, we'll see how we go. The volts are built up to 6.26 volts, so I'll throw the switch and we'll see if we can get that spin. There we go. Just a tiny little spin there. So what we now need to do um, is to progress the circuitry, really, to build it up into something that's useful, perhaps a um, radiant energy phone charger or torch or something like that. Okay, so as Rob explained, we have got a workshop coming up. What we're going to do, Rob is working on his microbial fuel cell. I'm working on a, a, a radiant energy device, and we're going to combine the two in the workshop. Um, dates will be coming forward, so you know exactly when to, uh, when to attend. Um, the stuff, we've, we've built kits. I'm going to work on this a bit more to see if I can get a bit more out of it. The final kit, along with Rob's kit, will then go up on the site. And I look forward to seeing you at the uh, workshop and we'll see what we can do with these things.